Can you imagine if Wonderland had lost all of its madness? Well, that's exactly what's happened, and it's just a pale shadow of its former self. In Wonderland's War, players take the roles of the Mad Hatter, the Red Queen, the Jabberwock, and of course, Alice herself, in a battle to lead the Wonderlandians back to all of the illogical mayhem they once enjoyed. But how exactly will they accomplish that task? Well, that's exactly what we're going to try to explain when we tell you how to play Wonderland's War. This game combines card drafting, area control, and bag building, with players pushing their luck in order to battle it out in the various regions of Wonderland. Each of the game's three rounds is divided into two phases, a tea party and a war. But before we get into the very first tea party, let's first do the setup of the game. To begin, place the game board in the center of the table. The board is broken into two main regions. In the center, you're gonna have the area for the tea party, while there are five regions on the outside of the game board that players will battle over during the war. Each of the game's five combat regions will receive one random combat token that will designate the number of victory points that players will receive for area control during each of those game's three rounds. To set up the Tea Party, which will be the beginning of each of the game's three rounds, you will take the Round 1 deck of cards and place one of these Tea Party cards at each of the seats of the table. Also, you're going to take a number of shards of the Hourglass, the Shard Die, and the Miniature for each of the leaders and place them at the head of the table. Speaking of their leader, players will also collect their leader board, which will have variable player powers that will direct their style of play. They're also going to collect all the tokens of their color, their bag with all of their chips, along with taking two quest cards and choosing one to start the game. Finally, for setup, the players will take all of the six different allies along with their corresponding chips and lay them off to the side of the board, and then choose three random Wonderlandians, which can be represented either by miniatures or chips of their own. Now that setup's done, it's time for your first tea party. In this phase, players are going to be racing around the table on the main board, drafting cards in order to take any number of different actions. On your turn, you can move as far around the table as you like collecting the card where you end your movement and resolving its effect. A card might allow you to build your bag by adding a variety of different chips to it. Everyone's bag starts with the same chips, but ally chips can be added this way, which not only add to your potential strength in battle, but also bring unique effects that will modify your strategies. Or you might get to upgrade your leader and unlock unique powers special only to them. Upgrades have ongoing effects for the rest of the game, and some can even strengthen the artifact chips you've added to your bag. You might choose to undertake more quests, which will give you another private objective for some end-of-game points. Each player begins with one quest, but getting more of these will open up even more ways of scoring. There are a number of other possible card effects, but probably the most exciting is recruiting one of the many unique Wonderlandians. Select from one of the three available and place its card in your player area. Any chips that come with the Wonderlandian are added to your bag. If there is an associated miniature, it's immediately placed into a region on the main board. The Wonderlandians bring even more unique powers and additional strengths to your faction, so enlist them wisely. And in addition to all of these effects, each tea cardy plays one more very important role. In the upper corner of each card, there is a number that represents how many supporters you may immediately add to any one region. And of course, the more support you have in a region, the longer you might last in battle. Turn after turn, players will continue to move around the table drafting cards until each player has four. However, when any player moves around the head of the table, they must stop temporarily and take care of a little business. The first thing they do will be to refill each of the empty seats not occupied by a leader with more cards. Then, the player who rounded the head of the table must roll the shard die and take that number of shards next to their player board. After everyone's fourth card has been resolved, each player in turn order will place their leader into any one of the regions in Wonderland. Finally, each player adds one more madness chip to their bag. The player with the most shards, however, adds two, but then gets to discard half of their shards. Now the stage is set for the war phase. In the war phase, players will compete in each of the regions where they have their units by drawing chips from their battle bag. The starting battle region each round is randomly chosen before the tea party. The war begins there, and all other regions are resolved in clockwise order around the board. To win a battle and subsequently build a castle, you must have the highest strength. 
Each battle, though, follows the exact same set of rules. First, determine each player's starting strength in that region. This may come from their leaders or their wonderlandians that are located there. Leaders start at strength of 1 and may be increased throughout the game. Each wonderlandian strength is located on their respective card. Next, each of the players participating in the battle will simultaneously draw and reveal a single chip from the bag, which might either add strength to the battle or make the units in that region go mad. Madness chips that are drawn are played on that player's leaderboard in the leftmost empty position, resulting in that player having to remove units from the region in the form of supporters, wonderlandians, and then finally their leader itself. Players may block this madness by using their active face-up shield token and flipping it to its inactive side, allowing them to return the just-drawn madness chip to the bag and drawing a replacement. If a player ever removes their final unit from a region, that player busts and will immediately reduce their strength back down to zero while moving all of their active chips to their exhausted side of their player board, effectively forfeiting the battle and all special abilities that were triggered from those active chips. If a player ever places a madness chip on the last base of their madness track, that player will refresh both their shield token and return all of their madness and exhausted chips back to their bag. However, if a player draws an ally, faction, or wonderlandian chip from the bag, they will instead resolve the effects of that chip and add its strength to the track. There are many chips that have different powers that will directly influence the battle or take effect at the battle's end. For example, flamingos will always double the strength of the next drawn chip, and Roses will award victory points if the player doesn't bust during the battle. And remember, each leader also has a set of abilities that can be unlocked and utilized when their personal artifact chips are drawn from the bag. This process of drawing chips from the bag will continue until all the active players either pass, bust, or one of the players reaches 25 on the battle track. Victory points will then be awarded to those players who did not bust according to the current round's victory reward token from that region. The player with the highest strength will be granted the ability to place a single castle of their color in that region, which will award them in-game victory points. There are two things that allow players to forge, either by collecting forge chips that were collected during the battle, or completing a battle when your token lands on one of the forge icons of the strength track. Either will allow that player to place any active token that was drawn during the battle on the leftmost empty space of their forge track, immediately gaining any rewards from the space, including additional artifact tokens, if they reach the end of the track. Finally, after claiming all rewards, including those that are granted from their Wonderlandians, each player will take all of their active chips and place them in the exhausted side of their player board. The Tea Party and subsequent war will occur three times in that order, and at the end of the third and final round, players will tally their final set of points. First, each player will gain victory points for each of the castles that they have placed in Wonderland. Next, each player will gain victory points for each of the quests they have in hand, doubling those points for any of their completed quests. And finally, players will lose one victory point for each shard of the hourglass that they have remaining. And as you can guess, the player with the most victory points wins. Hopefully that gives you a better idea for how to play Wonderland's War, but if you'd like to see a full playthrough, we have that on the channel too. Until then, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.